The People's Republic of China is now engaged in an economic blitzkrieg, an aggressive, orchestrated, whole of government, indeed whole of society campaign to seize the commanding heights of the global economy and to surpass the United States as the world's preeminent technological superpower. A centerpiece of this effort is the Chinese Communist Party's Made in China 2025 initiative, a plan for PRC domination of high-tech industries like robotics, advanced information technology, aviation, electronic, uh, electric vehicles, and many other technologies. Backed by hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies, this initiative poses a real threat to U.S. technological leadership. Despite World Trade Organization rules prohibiting quotas for domestic output, Made in China 2025 sets targets for domestic market share, sometimes as high as 70%, in core components and basic materials for industries, such as robotics and telecommunications. It is clear that the PRC seeks not merely to join the ranks of other advanced industrial economies, but to replace them altogether. Made in China 2025 is the latest iteration of the PRC's state-led mercantilist economic model. For American companies in the global marketplace, free and fair competition with China has long been a fantasy. To tilt the playing field to its advantage, China's communist government has perfected a wide array of predatory and often unlawful tactics, currency manipulation, tariffs, quotas, state-led strategic investment and acquisition, theft and forced transfer of intellectual property, state subsidies, dumping, cyber attacks, and industrial espionage. About 80% of all federal economic espionage prosecutions allege conduct undertaken for the benefit of the Chinese state. And about 60% of all trade secret theft cases have been connected to China. The PRC's drive for technological supremacy is complemented by its plan to monopolize rare earth materials, which play a vital role in industries such as consumer electronics, electric vehicles, medical devices, and military hardware. According to the Congressional Research Service, from the 1960s to the 1980s, the United States led the world in rare earth production. Since then, production has shifted almost entirely to China, in large part due to the lower labor costs and lighter economic and environmental regulation. The United States is now dangerously dependent on the PRC for these essential materials. Overall, China is America's top supplier, accounting for about 80% of our imports. The risk of dependence are real. In 2010, for example, Beijing cut exports of rare earth materials to Japan after an incident involving the disputed islands in the East China Sea. The PRC could do the same to us. America's big tech companies have also allowed themselves to become pawns of Chinese influence. Over the years, corporations such, such as Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, and Apple have shown themselves all too willing to collaborate with the CCP. For example, Apple recently removed the news app Quartz from its app store in China after the Chinese government complained about the coverage of Hong Kong democracy protests. Apple also removed the apps for virtual private networks, which had allowed users to circumvent the Great Firewall and eliminated pro-democracy songs from the Chinese music store. Meanwhile, the company announced that it would be transferring some of its iCloud data to servers in China, despite concerns that the move would give the Communist Party easier access to emails, text messages, and other user information stored in the iCloud. America's corporate leaders might not think of themselves as lobbyists, 
You might think, for example, that cultivating a mutually beneficial relationship is just part of a of Guangxi, the system of influence, influential social networking necessary to do business in the PRC. But you should be alert to how you might be used <clears throat> and how your efforts on behalf of a foreign company or government could implicate the Foreign Agents Registration Act. FARA does not prohibit any speech or conduct, but it does require those who are acting as agents of foreign principles to publicly disclose that relationship and their political or other similar activities by registering with the Justice Department, allowing the audience to take into account the origin of the speech when evaluating credibility. American companies must understand the stakes. The Chinese Communist Party thinks in terms of decades and centuries, while we tend to focus on the next quarter's earning report. But if Disney and other American corporations continue to bow to Beijing, they risk undermining both their own future competitiveness and prosperity, as well as the classical liberal order that has allowed them to thrive. 